Stereo, the next step in the beloved Honkai franchise, heading to the stars. A franchise known for its amazing characters, deep story with powerful moments, great visuals and... Uh, there's a chance you have no clue what I'm talking about, isn't there? That's very understandable, I was even in the same point some time ago. The fact is, although Honkai is a quite popular game, its younger brother, Genshin Impact, ended up becoming a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, Genshin is the biggest profit of gacha of all time right now. There are countless players who, even though they only know the youngest brother, saw the announcement of Star Rail a while ago and thought, wow, that looks cool, but I wish I could know more about what's going on overall. And, well, if that's the case, you're in luck, because this, ladies and gentlemen, is a little guide to help whoever wants to embark on this vast world, join the Astro Express crew and enter the Star Wars journey without the need to play the whole Honkai series to get here. However, I will open a little parenthesis here and say, the Honkai Saga is a wonderful experience, so I really suggest playing the games aside from Star Rail anyway. A problem around the Honkai universe is that sometimes it can be a bit confusing for beginners, especially when trying to get caught up in everything. Even the wiki can be a bit lackluster when looking for information at times. Even the game, the lore is scattered around many game modes, manga and other media. The main story is currently divided into 28 chapters, 8 chronicles, 4 open world stories, dozens of mangas, some youtube charts and 3 chapters of this realm. <sighs> Star Rail is, by all means, a new beginning in a new universe, so it should be a good starting point for everyone. Hopefully, this video can be a guide for a smoother journey. The goal of this video is that anyone that begins this knowing absolutely nothing about the Honkai series can end it with more knowledge about what Star Rail is about and be hyped about things and references in the future. With that said, let's get to it then! Let's start at the beginning then. Star Rail is a new game in the Honkai universe, though this series has a little story behind it. You might have heard of Honkai Impact 3rd, which we will focus on, but there is also Honkai Gakuen 2. This game was called Guns Girl Z Overseas, or GGZ, but their servers closed less than a year ago. The Japanese and Chinese servers are still very active though, recently celebrating their 8th anniversary. We will, however, focus on Honkai Impact 3rd, which will just call Honkai from now on. GGZ and Honkai have a lot of similarities in their lore, actually. A lot of the mangas used for world building in GGZ were reused without many problems in Honkai. Star Rail, however, has a completely different setting from both these games. There is also another game, Fly Me to the Moon, that some consider being part of the Honkai series. It was Mihoyo's first game, exclusively on iOS, following the journey of a little girl called Kiana Kazlana. Well, heading to the moon! It heavily influenced the other, future Mihoyo titles, especially given that Kiana is the protagonist in both GGZ and Honkai. It is also said that the script protagonist for this game is the basis for the character of March 7th, an important character in Star Rail. So, it's important to know that Star Rail is a completely different universe from the other games. If you just close this video right now and go play, assuming it's out already, you might find little to no difficulties in following the plot or what is even going on. Well, so that means I can just ignore the other games and just understand everything? That they have no correlation at all? You might have guessed by the length of this video, but no. In fact, Honkai Impact 3rd is quite closely tied together with Star Rail, their plots interconnect at a certain point. So, to truly understand one, we might need to go deeper into the other. That means you'll need to head quite a lot into the plot of Honkai, once again. Honkai is a beautiful game with a deeply emotional story, and I highly recommend playing it to experience that. In fact, trying to understand the plot was the whole reason I started playing. With that in mind, I'll try to inspire as little as possible, in case you want to experience that for yourself someday as well. Of course, I won't be able to avoid all spoilers, so beware! Another important thing to know is that, while you can understand a lot already, the story of Honkai is still going strong. So, there might be some things and connections to Star Rail we will only know in the future. In fact, that's very likely. If that's the case, I'll update the comments with the new stuff we know about. To begin our quest to understand the world of Star Rail, we first need to understand what even is the world of Honkai. 
First of all, we talk a lot about Honkai this, Honkai that, but what in the world even is a Honkai? That's a very prominent concept in the story actually. I mean, it's the title of the game. The wiki classifies the Honkai as a cataclysm, and that's interesting. The Honkai is a first hell-bent on destroying civilization, as a test of sorts, like natural selection. Not only human civilization, every kind of civilization. They are constantly present throughout history, in various forms. The Black Plague, for example, was a manifestation of Honkai for humanity to deal with. They don't make the fight unfair though, the Honkai will always fight on the same level as the civilization is. If a society is more advanced, then the Honkai will also be more developed. This Honkai obeys an entity, an otherworldly god known as the Will of the Honkai. This entity has appeared very little up until now, so very few is known about it. It is certain that it leads the Honkai, in a way, has almost endless amount of knowledge and always mirrors the face of those who are speaking to this god. The Honkai will also generate things like Honkai beasts, monsters that attack and decimate the people. Or the Honkai Infection, a sickness that has a rate of close to 100% of mortality. Or even zombies, that are the Honkai reanimating the corpses of the deceased to make them fight against their previous peers. But the most dangerous of all, the biggest threat to society, is when a human is able to adapt to the power of the Honkai. This human can bend the laws of nature to its will, and, in almost all the cases, will completely obey the will of the Honkai, seeking the destruction of humanity in a way that's more powerful than any before. This human is what they call a Hersher. If you played Genshin, Hershers are what would be the closest to an Archon, extremely powerful people, able to control certain elements of the world in a way. According to the super intelligent AI Prometheus, there are 14 Hurchers. They all have different powers and abilities. For example, the Hurcher of Ice is able to, well, control ice. The Hurcher of Wind controls the wind. They aren't all this straightforward, however. The Hurcher of Sentience can control illusions and dreams. The Hurcher of Stars can control gravity and black holes. And the Hurcher of Reason can create and manipulate matter. At the end of them all, there is the 14th Hurcher, the Hurcher of the End, the last Hurcher, the one able to cause the apocalypse and wipe out humanity. Most Hurchers can even control Honkai Beasts, they are extremely powerful. The Hurcher of Fire alone once burned out the entirety of Australia in one week. A Hurcher personality will be generated, mostly feeding off the host's negative emotions, obeying the will of Honkai and going against its own people. However, there are several cases of hosts that resisted this so-called corruption, allying themselves with humanity instead. These Hurchers also all have what's called a Hurcher Core, a very powerful item, the very representation of their full strength. These cores are all available to all sorts of things, for both Honkai and humanity alike, making it even possible to even use them to create powerful weapons to fight against that madness. Well, that's a lot of destructive power. Let's just move to things that actually happen in the story then. It's interesting to think that the Honkai has been the major source of problems since the beginning of the series, but Star Whale has them notably quite absent. Mysteries that we'll find out. To understand everything leading to this new title, we need, well, to go to the very beginning. Our plot begins a long time, 50,000 years ago. This is the story of the previous era, a civilization more advanced than ours, that lost the battle against the Honkai and ended up extinct. However, the advancements they made still help society to this day. Some people from that era are even still alive. These brilliant minds, like, for example, the exceptional Dr. Mei, were able to create many projects and plans to try to fight against the Honkai. This group was called the Moths to Chase the Flames. Among these projects, there is, for example, Project Ark, which tried to find a safe haven across the stars. Project Valuka, which tried to find other universes that defeated the Honkai. 
Project Sanctuary, which secured the ones that survived the final herter into cryogenic pods so they could make it into the current era. And then there's also Project Soldier. Project Soldier was one of the measures made by Dr. Mei in order to stop the Honkai around the appearance of the seventh herter. She took Kevin Kaslana, her lover, and fused his body with the genes of a Honkai beast. That was highly experimental and gave Kevin a permanent side effect. His body temperature was lowered to sub-zero levels, meaning no human could stand around him for long. However, the experiment was a success, and Kevin was able to beat the herter with ease. He was the first Mantis, massively augmented new tech integrated soldiers. Dr. May then doubled down on it and went to create more and more mantises, all that made possible by the experiments in the operating table of Dr. Mobius, another brilliant researcher who had usually even experimented on herself. A lot of mantis soldiers were created, but all that went to ruin with the advent of the 11th Herter, the Herter of Binding. Its powers were so strong that almost all soldiers perished before it was destroyed. From now on, only 13 Mantises remained, and Elysia took this 13 and formed a group of them to symbolize hope and unity to those who remained. They were called the 13 Flame Chasers, who spearheaded the fight for humanity against the Honkai, led by none other than Kevin Kaslana himself. And trust me, Kevin alone and a lot of hurters since his surgery. Every single Flame Chaser was notable in some way. They had people like Eden, a superstar singer from the previous era. Pardo Felis, a kitty thief with quick hands and very fast to sell things to anyone. And even Mobius herself was one of them, the brilliant researcher with little overall regard for ethics. However, an important one worth mentioning a bit more was Vilvi. Vilvi called herself a magician of sorts, but her true magic were her inventions. Using the cores of the defeated Herchers, Vilvi was able to create what's called the Divine Keys, weapons made with the power of Herchers to slay Herchers. I mean, weapons might be a bit loose. The Divine Keys were very... unique. Most were, indeed, weapons. But there are also things like the one made with the core of the Hercher of the Wind, that's a satellite that controls the weather. Or the one with the core of the Hurt of the Void, the cosmic juggernaut that's somehow a train that manipulates space-time and travels between worlds. Thinking about it, this divine key is kinda similar to the Astro Express in Star Rail, huh? But the most impactful to say right now is the divine key made with the core of the very first Hurter, the Hurter of Reason. The key of revelation called Void Archives. This is a very special divine key. It holds all the knowledge and wisdom from the previous era, storing this knowledge in a metaphysical library. And it can also mimic the other divine keys, with a fraction of their power. But the most important of all, Void Archives is sentient. That's right, VLV made a divine key capable of thinking by itself, making decisions and controlling its own destiny. Void Archives can invite those chosen by themselves to a library inside the very own divine key, the knowledge of the past era. Void Archives, or VA, is able to talk, think for itself, and even give counseling. It's that powerful. Even though it does take the form of a simple golden cube, it's a really, really, really powerful golden cube. Vil V herself said VA could be one of the greatest enemies of mankind, given it only cares for exterminating the Honkai and not for humanity itself. In the end though, even though the previous era and the flame chasers fall to the end, they were unable to defeat the Honkai. Even before the fight, there weren't many survivors left. Humanity had all its cities bombed, and at least three flame chasers were already gone by the time the final herter appeared, with two more dying within minutes of the final battle. Kevin Kaslana, however, was able to incapacitate the herter of the end for 12 hours. The remaining survivors took this time to initiate Project Sanctuary, entering cryopods to survive until the next era. However, some, like Eden, decided to stay behind and die with this era. Regardless, after this was all done, the fourth divine key, the satellite, entered into action, 
purging the world from the Honkai infestation, making it clear for the next generations to rise. And thus, the previous era came to an end. So let's move into the current era, the one where we live now today. Honkai's story takes place in a slightly altered version of our present world, so most things are left the same. We can, then, move further into the past, to the 15th century. Around 700 years ago, a secret organization was created to fight the Honkai, working behind the scenes to not cause mass panic in the population. This organization was called the Church of Shikso. Shikso, by then, was governed mostly by three branch families, the Shariak, the Kazlana, and the Apocalypse. Yes, yes, that Kazlana. The Shariaks, the priestesses, are responsible for cleansing, manipulation, and control of Honkai energy. The Kazlanas, the Knight, are responsible for combat against the Honkai forces. And the Apocalypse, the Bishop, govern over the Shiksa organization. Our tale begins then with a little young boy called Otto Apocalypse. Otto was frail and ill-suited to fight, which led him to become quite the outcast during his young age. He was quite inventive, and his creativeness and ingenuity made him become quick friends with the young daughter of the Kazlana family. That was Kalen Kazlana, daughter of one of the greatest warriors of their generation. Kalen and Otto grew up basically together as the closest of friends, and it wasn't long before Otto developed a crush on her. He'd do anything for his dear Kalen, and she shared his friendship a lot. Shikso, however, even if corrupt and rotten, was also powerful and influential, being a major force in conflicts like the Crusades. They were also responsible for finding and keeping many relics of their long-gone previous era, that include the divine keys made by Vil V with the past Hurter cores. At some point then, Kalen's dad died, and that led her into a wave of sorrow and depression. Seeking to help the most important person in his life, Otto looked for a way to aid her in Shiksa's relics. He found a sealed, golden box with no way to open. However, when he touched it, the box responded, acknowledging his brilliant mind and knowledge. And that's how Otto Apocalypse first met Void Archives, the first divine key. Void Archives immediately tried to make Otto trade his life for the one of Kalen's father, but Kalen herself ended up stopping him. Kalen had a strong sense of justice, so when she found out the church was morally rotten, she started rebelling against Chikso. She began stealing from the influential, corrupt nobles with an influence from Shakespeare herself, and giving back to the poor. Otto was her partner in crime, but it didn't spring into action. So when these nobles sprung a trap to capture the thief and take them prisoner, it was only Kalen that was taken and judged. Kalen left but was sentenced to death after stealing an important relic that Shikso was trying to harness this power. This action also made her meet Yai Sakura, who she got really, really, really close with, but also led to Sakura's destruction by being corrupted by the relic, a black box, and having to be sealed in it. Due to the pain of losing Sakura, Kalen accepted her fate, without resisting. However, someone did resist. Otto Apocalypse! Trying to cause a distraction and save Kalen, he summoned a Honkai Beast, when she was supposed to be hanged. However, the Honkai Beast started targeting innocents. Kalen, with her strong sense of justice, broke free from her shackles and rushed to save the people, only to be killed by the beast in the process. Otto saw the love of his life perishing in front of him, by something that was his fault, with him unable to do anything, the biggest regret of his life. He then decided to return to the relic, Otto came back to Void Archives seeking its knowledge and mysteries. The two allied themselves, Otto gained access to the immense and vast library inside Void Archives with the knowledge of the previous era. This partnership remained for many years, with Otto mimicking the other divine keys when needing to fight. Using the image of Kalen, the once frail boy rallied allies and soldiers to take control of Shikso. Now, Otto Apocalypse was the overseer. By creating new bodies and transferring his soul and conscience to them, he managed to essentially reach almost a state of immortality. But his long life had only one objective, correcting the mistake he made 500 years ago, saving the life that wasn't fair to die, bringing Kalen Kazlana back to life. Let's move now to the 20th century! 
Shiksaw is now a very different organization, led all this time by the overseer Otto Apocalypse, with various branches around the world. Back then, in 1952, the first Herter finally awakened to deal with the current era, the Herter of Reason, killing over 300,000 people. He was called Velt Joyce and was taken in custody by Shiksaw to be properly studied and tested on. However, something different happened at this time. Joyce kept his sanity and human consciousness afterward, not being overwhelmed by the Honkai. In the North American branch of Shiksaw, he met and befriended people like Einstein and Tesla, and others like Schrodinger and Edinson. He also met a child called Joachim Noken Virtanen, and his dad, Finn, worked for Chiksaw. Joachim becomes quick friends with Tesla, frequently getting drunk and inventing together. However, at some point, Otto threatens Joachim's life. Revolted by this, Finn starts sabotaging the North American branch, telling this to everyone, that is, until Otto finds out and tries to kill everyone involved. He manages to kill Finn and almost kills Joachim, but Joyce takes the bow for him. From the headquarters of Shiksaw, Otto sends a ballistic missile toward the North American branch, but Joyce uses his powers to create a shield. His plan is successful, but he loses his life in the process. The Herter of Reason perishes, but its core ends up inherited by Joachim, who becomes the new Herter of Reason. After this battle, the North American branch decides to separate itself from Shiksaw, becoming its own organization, called Anti-Entropy. Joachim, now the Herter of Reason, assumes his position as the leader of Anti-Entropy and adopts a new name. Honoring his predecessor and hero, Velt Joyce, Joachim now becomes Velt Yang, sovereign of Anti-Entropy and protector of humanity. From there on, as well, Anti-Entropy and Shiksaw become huge, bitter rivals. Velt lives up to this title more than once, but his biggest challenge ends up being in 2002, with the rise of the second Herter, the Herter of Void. She was called Siri, who manifested her powers after years of abuse and testing by the Shiksaw labs in Siberia. Siri even ends up defeating Velt in battle, destroying his body. She also kills more than 2 BILLION people during weeks of assaults from the moon. Shiksa actually had an opportunity to destroy the Herter, but Otto withdrew the attack, with hopes he could use her power in a chance to bring Kalen back. Velt, however, proves to still be alive, his consciousness is still lingering around Sirin. Many combined forces from ancient entropy and Shiksa went to take down the Herter in a final stand. From these forces, three of them stand out a bit. Cecilia Shariak, a Valkyrie of Shiksa, her husband, Siegfried Kaslana and her best friend, Teresa Apocalypse, a clone created by Otto using Kalen's genes. We do not have a happy ending, however, as Cecilia dies in battle, trying to give Siri the comfort and care of a mother in her final moments. It's not like she didn't have any experience, as she had a daughter herself with Siegfried, the young Kiana Kaslana, now left without a mother. Cecilia had a dream. Valkyries, Shiksa's strongest soldiers against the Honkai, went through heavy training, almost not able to live a normal life. She wanted to create an academy, when, at least when training, these Valkyries could live and fulfill their lives to the fullest. She even invited Teresa to be a professor, but she refused, saying she wasn't good with children. With Cecilia dead, however, Teresa herself takes upon her dream. She creates the Saint Freya Academy on an island in the Far East, becoming its principal. Velt himself regains his body after a while, although weaker with his powers. He becomes a history teacher in Saint Freya for some time as well, manipulating the memories of Teresa and the staff so they wouldn't recognize him. But before that, he has to be a substitute teacher for Einstein at the University of California. The next step for us is a manga called Alien Space. And Alien Space is a very weird and complicated manga, to the point there's even some discussion about how canon it is. In fact, my very first introduction to the Honkai series, when I was, myself, trying to understand the lore leading up to Star Rail, was this manga. And oh, heavens above, I was left really confused by the end. The thing about Alien Space is that two stories in one, being told at the same time. The first, and the one the manga focuses on the most, in fact, passed in 2005, more than 10 years before the main story of Honkai Impact 3rd. 
and the other part passed in 2029, more than 10 years after the main story of Honkai Impact's third, leading directly to Star Rail. But let's take a trip to the past first. The year is 2005, and we are focused on the academic life of a young girl, obsessed with aliens and life on other planets, a certain Himeko Murata. This young Himeko is peppy, full of energy, and a student at the University of California, where she meets her substitute professor, a certain, guess who? Veld Yang. They meet, and Himeko ends up mistaking the sovereign of ancient entropy for a fan of ufology. She ends up roping the man to join her in her search for the mysteries of space, on which Vels tries to get out as soon as possible. Meanwhile, ancient entropy is held by another kind of crisis. A man, a scientist from Shiksel, who appeared in secret trying to warn them about a possible secret attack from Otto Apocalypse. This man is none other than Ryuzuki Murata, Himeko's father, and the weapon he refers to is none other than the recently found 4th Divine Key, the satellite the previous era used to clean the world. At first, Einstein and Tesla are very suspicious of Ryuzuki. This man just came here and leaked out his info without the ever-present watch of Otto Apocalypse getting him. Ryuzuki does have a trick though. Like his daughter, he is very interested in the space ahead of us, in finding life in another planet. A life that finds him. A little alien species called the Suggers contact him. The Suggers are a very peaceful species that live hidden, away from danger, moving places when things start to go south. Their home was destroyed, and they live without physical form, it's just their constants around. The sugars might not want to interact with the outside world, but that's not true for all of them. Peppermint, a little, excited sugar, goes out to explore and see the world. He meets Yuzuki, who had been stumped on his search for alien life, and decides to bond with him, violating all the rules of the suckers by doing so. The two help each other out, and Peppermint's the one responsible for blocking Otto's mental tricks on Yuzuki to find his true intentions. That's how he ends up telling the plans to enter entropy and detect it. They end up trusting him after a while. Meanwhile, Himeko came to bother Veld about watching telescopes together while he's trying to think about how to get out of the situation. Suddenly, Veld sends danger, a presence more powerful than countless Honkai beasts. Immediately, he protects Himeko, only to find her father approaching, trying to visit her. More relaxed, he sees father and daughter living to catch up, but still concerned about the presence he felt. Back at Chanty Entropy, Tesla ends up activating the 4th Divine Key on accident. Being the satellite that can control the weather that it is, it creates a powerful hurricane near Houston, a trap from Otto to whoever tries to tamper with the device. Or so it seems. Back at Chixel, Otto is just as surprised about this development. Regardless, Tesla, Einstein and Yusuke go to New Mexico to try to take down the thing with a missile. However, in New Mexico, the Trill and Peppermint find themselves under attack from something different. A little spy boat, red, small, alien-like, an attack from an alien species that they call the Sky People, mind-controlling the guards of the facility. The sugars deem Earth as doomed, and then an attack from the Sky People is imminent. Velt, however, without knowledge of the aliens, assumes the Sky People are machines made by Hyuzuki and almost engages in confrontation with him, a battle that's safe from happening by Himeko. Ryuzuki reveals to Velt the existence of the Suggers, bringing him to their world. In there, they reveal how the Sky People work. Sending technology disguised as asteroids, called Vanguard Stones, they find suitable worlds, filled with Honkai for them to harvest, but not stronger than their own civilization. After the harvest is done and the civilization is defeated, the Sky People destroy all that's left, erasing any trace that they ever existed. That's what happened to the Suggers' original home. While they are there though, the Sky People strike again, now targeting Himeko, sending her to the hospital. The team find that the Vanguard Stone is coming to Earth, and there's little time to stop it. A very distressed Yusuke, given his daughter's condition, almost dying, and a worried Veld are sent into space to deal with the crisis. And that they quickly do, with Veld's hurtered power saving the day. However, Hyuzuki ends up being an actual traitor. He tries to convince Veld to make Ancient Entropy helps his dream of exploring the space and advancing humanity at first. 
But when Velt declines, saying there are more pressing matters on Earth right now, like the Honkai or his own daughter's life, he doesn't take it too well. He says he's ready to sacrifice anything for humanity's future. His daughter, Himeko, his partner, Peppermint, instantly killing him and taking his power. And the suffering of Enchantropy, aiming for Velt's hurter powers, he starts a fight with him, saying that Velt has always been his target. He used the fourth Divine Key, baited its high people and even used his own Himeko out to bring Velt to where he desired. Ryuzuki draws a lot of power from the Sugar World to take on Velt, dealing a lot of heavy damage to the Hurter of Reason, but using the powers of the Core of Reason to its fullest, Velt takes it back and destroys his enemy. Yuzuki is now dead. The Elder Suggers appear, thanking Velt for his help in taking him down and avenging Peppermint, saying he is a good person. The Suggers will move their little world though. Back on Earth, in the hospital, as she awakens, Himeko finds a letter from her late dad, apologizing and saying he believes in her future. Himeko is absolutely devastated, but her future emerges rather quickly. When she arrives home, she finds her dad's files and the place he worked. A place she now aims to go as well to find answers. Shikso. After this whole time, we finally arrive at this point, the actual game! Yes, all that was said and told before was at least some backstory for the game's plot, we barely went into any spoilers at all. Our story begins in the Academy of Saint Freya, where young girls train to be Valkyries of Shiksal. Among the students, we have three ones majorly important for our plot. There's our protagonist, Kiana Kaslana, the daughter of Siegfried and Cecilia, who is looking for her dad, who abandoned her almost 10 years ago. There's also Raiden May, her best friend, who awakened a few years prior as the third Hurter, the Hurter of Thunder, and suppresses her Hurter personality constantly. Raiden May should not be mistaken by Dr. May, the scientist from the previous era. They're two entirely different people, and Dr. May is long dead. And there's also Bronya, who requires a bit more backstory. Bronya was orphaned during Siri's attack on humanity and was raised in the Kokolia Orphanage. Led by Kokolia, their Matuska, the orphanage was also a branch of anti entropy and conducted studies and research to fight the Honkai. Bronya was also raised there with her best friend, the sweet and caring Sally, who was lost in the sea of quanta between worlds after a failed experiment. There's also the Vodka Sisters, Rosalie and Lilia, and the antipathic Singmao. After another failed experiment, where Bronya tried to rescue her dear Sally without success, Bronya lost the use of her legs and the ability to express higher emotions. Another important student of the Academy is Fuwa, the class monitor. She is very dedicated, one of the best students in the Academy. She also tutors Kiana, who is a terrible student. To her annoyance, Kimi should just rather be playing games and be with May all day. The Saint Freya Academy is led by its principal, Teresa Apocalypse, who Kiana dearly calls Aunt Terry. Among its staff, the most important one is the Valkyrian teacher, Major Himeko Murata. Himeko is exceptional at what she does, but a bit differently from her years at the university, she is now snarky, a bit reckless, and spends her free time in mostly drunk. Even though sometimes she doesn't look like the part, Himeko is highly competent when needed. She's the one that managed to subdue the Harcher of Thunder and bring Kiana, May and Bronya to the cat. She's also the captain of the Hyperion Battleship, a huge combat station in their possession. At some point in the story though, Kiana is corrupted by the soul of Siri, who comes back and becomes once again the Harcher of the Void, hell-bent on destroying the world. Their collective efforts manage to stop Siren though, and Kiana regains control of her body. But that requires the sacrifice of her precious teacher, our dear Himeko Murata, who gives her own life to defeat the Hurter of Void and save Kiana. Well, there are also the Valkyries that are not in training. Shikso, still led by Otto Apocalypse, counts on many Valkyries around to help and fight against the Honkai. These Valkyries are classified in ranks, the highest one being the S-Rank Valkyries. There are three. Bianca, called Durando, who is the captain of the Immortal Blades and wielder of the Abyss Flower, the sixth Divine Key, a weapon previously owned by Cecilia. 
There's also Rita Rossweiss, Durantal's partner and friend in the Immortal Blades, and the mate. And finally, there's Li Su Shang, a fighter from the time when Kalen was still alive, who was captainized into the current era. After doing some battles for Otto, though, the girl decides to take the train and leave to meet new places. Where could she have ended up? We also need to go on a little trip towards Chapter 25 EX, a bit far ahead in the plot. That's when, by Otto's orders, Durandal tests the second divine key, the train that travels words. She ends up in the world of the Suggers, the same ones from alien space. Living there, she also finds Shiguru Kira, an old friend of hers from Shiksa, who dreams of being an idol. She ended up there on an exploration mission and now lives in the world of the Suggers. The people of ancient entropy are still going strong, with Veld still being its sovereign. Einstein and Tesla are also still alive and well, contributing a lot to the fight against the Honkai. There's also Kokolia, who runs the orphanage where Bronya came from. Although she cares for her children, she's also willing to stop at nothing to fulfill her goals, crossing many lines even for ancient entropy, even getting to kidnap Raiden Mei and the Herder of Wind at some point. The current era also has a third major organization at play, fighting the Honkai their own way. They try to expose the whole of humanity to Honkai genes, so they can have a chance against Herders. That, however, is a risky plan, given 99% of humanity would most likely die in the process. This organization is called the World Serpent. The World Serpent is the organization with the closest proximity to the previous era. In fact, not only was founded by an artificial life created by Mobius, but it is currently led by none other than Kevin Kaslana, still alive to this day. Working for a World Serpent, there are people like Jekyll, a scientist with a panel for immoral experiments, much like Mobius herself in that sense. There is also Raven, a mercenary and fighter who also secretly cares for the children that suffered losses from her attacks. Raven's true name is Natasha Siwara, and she became a mercenary after suffering heavy losses from a Hersher attack herself, when the Hersher of Void made her advance on humanity. World Serpent's headquarters are also home to the Lysian Realm, a very, very complex place with simulations of spaces from the previous era and a very accurate simulations of all the 13 Flame Chasers. It's a place mostly governed by the simulation of Elysia, the second in charge of the Flame Chasers in the previous era. Since we don't want to get into major spoilers for the current era, we'll stop at that and return to these characters later. There is, however, a mode in the game that's majorly important for the plot we're trying to understand and where we'll tie together everything we've seen so far. This mode is called... A post Honkai Odyssey, or Epho, is an open world adventure in Honkai Impact 3rd that does not interfere with the main story. In fact, the events of Epho happen 8 years after the main story, being a sequel of sorts to Honkai. The most important thing about Epo is that now, 8 years later, almost all the Honkai on Earth is gone, banished and sealed on the moon. Shiksa still goes strong though, Otto Apocalypse is now dead, and Teresa Apocalypse is the overseer now. That's not to mean that Saint Frey is now out of operation, in fact, it's strong as ever. They have 4 special squads, led by their strongest Valkyries and other fighters in training. We begin in Odyssey with our protagonist, Adam, who's an amazing rarity in the ranks of Saint Freya. He's a male student. Adam's part of Squad 3 with Carol, a student full of energy who tends to slack off way too much at times. Their leader is Raiden May, yes, the same one from all the years ago, the former Herder of Thunder, now 8 years older and more major. Squad 3 is sent on a mission to the distant city of Saint Fountain in the southern part of the African continent. Trouble starts brewing when the one and only Veld Yang, now a simply anime producer, goes there for a simple visit and disappears, stopping to respond to any sign of communication. Chicksaw then sends May, Adam and Carol to investigate and bring him back safely. Nobody expected what they would find in there though. When reaching St. Fountain, the squad finds the appearance of many mechanic-like creatures. These weren't the Honkai they used to fight against many years ago, but something different. Aliens. The city itself was empty, free from people, but now was filled with the red, mechanical, alien-like creatures they're finding now. 
Among the way, they also find a last little boy called Joffrey Joyce Yang. The first Hercher of Reason? No, the son of the second. Joffrey, or Dewey as everyone calls him, is the adopted son of Vel Yang. Presumably, his mother is Tesla. The little boy is also a clone of the original Joyce Yang. Kokulia made lots of this to make Shiksa's life hell, but this one was found as just a baby and adopted by Velt. Father and son got separated once they barely arrived at Saint Fountain. Joey explains that their guide was showing them around when a flash of light came and everything, cars, people, all, was gone. The alien-like monsters attacked them when Velt told Joey to hide in an alley. That's when the two of them got lost at the bridge. Investigating the bridge, the squad finds a huge castle floating there. One Carol promptly names the Arcane Castle, based on an enemy made by Velt himself. They also do find Velt in there, bringing him to safety and emotionally reuniting Father and Son once again. To ensure Velt and Dewey's safety, the squad manages to get the train working and put the two in there while they investigate the mysteries of Sand Fountain by themselves. Without their knowledge though, the plan backfires. A mysterious man warps into the train and takes Velt away. This mysterious man has the body and face of an old friend, supposed to be dead. Otto Apocalypse! However, Otto Apocalypse is indeed dead. But one creature knew where his clones were, knew how to transfer their consciousness to them. A creature nobody, except for Otto himself, knew that it had consciousness. A creature he trapped for 500 years, had no love for humanity, and not to fear what they might do when given freedom, a freedom that was given when not to die. This creature is an old acquaintance of ours, the one that has been around for more than 50,000 years, the creation of Vil V, the first divine key, Void Archives! Felt and VA share a conversation. Although the divine key has no love for the human race, Vil V's programming makes him have one goal, the extinction of the Honkai. Stealing it on the moon to void archives is not a good alternative. The Honkai is not gone, but just merely kept at bay. VA plans on taking them all out, telling Velt that for their plan to work, they need two things, or rather, two sacrifices. The sacrifice of the entirety of Sand Fountain and the sacrifice of Velt himself would not be able to withstand the power of this plan. It is revealed in audio files that void archives is the one responsible for bringing the aliens to Earth. As you might have guessed, they're the Skype people, the same ones from the Alien Space manga. To reach what's desired, Void Archives started serving them, being majorly responsible for what happened to Sand Fountain. VA started teaching the Skype people the human language and trying to open a gate between words so they can invade this one. Void Archives gets closer to one of the creatures, teaching them our language and giving them a name, Lutini. The Skype people are a civilization in this vast universe, which means they also face the threat of the Honkai. Instead of fighting against them, however, their solution was never to defeat the Honkai. Instead, they evolved, assembling the Honkai into themselves. These weird hybrid constructs are what the Squad Tree fights in Saint Fountain. Speaking of the tree, they manage to go back to their arcane castle to try to defeat whatever the great evil in this town is. In there, they find the one and only Void Archives, which summons a huge beast to destroy them. The world. The fight kind of doesn't go well. Carol's down and the world impales me to take off whatever is left of her Hercher's powers. In a last effort, Adam uses almost all of his Honkai energy, intending to consume himself in the process, to fend off the world and save me and Carol. He actually managed to, without dying, but heavily infected by the Honkai in his body, close to death. Carol comes back to herself, only to realize she has now to defend not only her life, but May Adam as well, against the horde of enemies approaching. She holds off the best she can, but cannot win against all of them. However, her actions are just enough to keep the enemy at bay until help arrives. This help, this reinforcement, is none other than the former third herder of Reason, the Silver Wolf of the Euros, the current game designer for the Arahato games. She does not work for Shiksa anymore, but at a request from the Overseer, she came back to act as acting leader of Squad 2, while their leader is unavailable. She is May's old friend, Bronya Zichik. Bronya takes the trio back to safety, actually though they crash down. Now located in a down area of Sand Fountain, unable to get back to where they once were, Adam is introduced to the rest of Bronya's squad. 
Tímido! Ah, uh, well, very timid girl. Specialized in ice skating and assassin skills. And Lyo, a sniper who's Adam's old friend and roommate from before and Freya. To help Adam with his Honkai infection and not, well, die, Bronya presents the Shiksaw's R&D's new invention. A bracelet called the Moon Ring, which can harness Honkai power and make them stronger. Also, it has a cool grappling hook. With that done, the four of them make a little base in an abandoned repair shop. Trying to go back to the upper part of Sand Fountain, the group finds a curious portal. This portal brings them to some sort of alternate dimension, connecting them to this world. They also find Carol in there, who starts helping the group as best as she can, by making drinks and managing a store on the base. Eventually, they also find Mei, who rejoins them. Together, the seven of them come to face their final challenge. Once again, Void Archives! The Divine Key greets them by saying they can't stop what's coming and can't defeat them or Lucani. They immediately proceed to defeat Void Archives and an avatar of Lucani afterwards. Void Archives doesn't die though, merely reverting to his golden cube-like form. The group's victory is also not enough to stop their plans. The Sky People's invasion begin, with portals bringing their advance. Overseer Terry's Apocalypse declares this the biggest emergency in a long time, urging all this quest to head immediately to Sand Fountain, saying she'll also join the battle herself. And that's all for a post Honkai Odyssey. For now at least, there's more Sir to come, especially when it ends on a cliffhanger like this one. However, for us to understand the plot of Star Rail, the most important has already been told, so we can move to the next part, the last stop in our journey. Also, it's important to say that in the case that the future parts of Apple actually end up being relevant to Star Rail, I'll make an append in the comments, so depending on when are you watching this, look it up! Before we end the relevant parts of Honkai Impact 3rd, we need to go on a little trip back to alien space! If you remember it right, the manga goes back and forth between two eras, 2005, when the crisis with Himeko and her father happens, and 2029. 2029 is a long time after the events of the main game, heavens, it's even after Apple! The story begins with the dynamic duo now in space, that is, Veltiang and Void Archives, now back with Photo's body. The two of them find themselves in a space base, somewhere in the galaxy. That is, the other side of the gates, the gates the sky people open to evade. According to Void Archives, that is, now, the only option to stop their invasion. They find a star that seems to be the sky people's headquarters, where they can be seen launching vanguard stones in space. Just guys as some of them, Velt and Void Archives invade the said headquarters. The Divine Key managed to find the control hub of the base, on which they move to. In there, Velt sets up a timer, meant to completely disable the control hub and delete all data, effectively destroying the base. However, Velt's not satisfied. He says Void Archives has been concealing information from him. He takes the files the Divine Key has been looking at and finds something he can't believe. In the files, a photo. A photo of his student, on which he says he'd recognize her anywhere and wants to know what the Skype people want with her. That's where things get a bit curious, they never say who the student is. But given the context of alien space, there's only one logical answer, Himeko Murata. However, that's impossible, as we know, and Vel does too, Himeko is long dead, having sacrificed her life to save Kiana. Nobody else fits the bill, but that doesn't make sense, why are the Skype people even interested in a teacher that died more than 10 years ago? Find Archives intervene, saying that's beyond Velt's reach, and that's where you'll finally reach our first point of convergence! That's because, you see, the answer VA gives is one of the most unexpected. That girl that Velt saw is not from the world we know. A parallel universe! Universe beyond our own that the sky people are planning on invading. There is no conclusive proof of this, but it all converges to one conclusion. That was, indeed, Himeko Murata but not the Himeko Murata we know and love. Another, different, one that's not from this land, from this world, one that's not from this universe. That is to say, that is the Murata Himeko of the world of Honkai, Star Rail, the captain of the Astro Express! But, but, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Velt's reaction to this is that, well, they should go and stop them, to what Void Archive says they have no duty to do so. 
as they discuss, Void Archive's girls concerned that this other world is either defeated or defeats the Sky People, and a bigger threat comes for this world. Meanwhile, Veld believes in the power of diplomacy and forged an alliance with the people of this other universe. In the end, they both agree to go into a quest to save people from another universe. Things don't end there though, even though they destroyed space, they are still trapped in space, far from Earth. They both say that it will take a long time to die, but eventually you'll just turn into stardust. That is until help actually arrives. A portal, bringing a sucker and Rundle's friend, Shigur Kira. In debt to what Vel did to them all those years ago, the suckers now came to their rescue this time. They're headed straight to Earth, as Shigur Kira says, with no detours. But it's fine, as they say. They'll figure out how to reach the another universe, by themselves. It's the beginning of a new journey, a journey that will extend across different galaxies. I think... I think you know where I'm finally getting at. Star Rail! Finally, we have arrived at our main destination! The next game in the Honkai series, Honkai Star Rail! So, let's give an overall look to see where we actually arrived. We actually currently know very little about Star Rail's plot, in fact. We do know that we have an avatar protagonist, like the Traveler in Genshin, that is, the Trailblazer. Our Trailblazer is part of the crew of what's called the Astro Express, a train that travels through the universe, going around in its ever-expanding trailblazing expedition. And that has a very, very, very similar concept to the second Divine Key, the Cosmic Juggernaut. Among the crew of the Astro Express, we have some notable members. Dan Hang, the Express Guard, one of a mysterious past that he doesn't talk about. March 7th, yes, that's her name, who looks like the main focus of our story. She's a very hyperactive and friendly person, very much like Kiana, in fact, who was awakened from a piece of drifting ice without knowing a thing about her past. She named herself of the day she was found and born again, and always carries a camera around to never miss the new memories she's creating. Another important member is the captain. Once on Earth, when she was a child, she found the Astro Express, stranded. Years later, she repaired the train and began her own journey through the stars, just like she would always have wanted in another world. Exactly, we're here talking about Murata Himeko, captain of the Astro Express! If the Himeko in you always wanted to travel the stars, this one's fulfilling the dream. She's also way less drunk. It's also very likely that it's her profile that the Sky people had in their hands. The last member we know about on the Express is probably the most intriguing member of them all. It's a name we've probably heard many times by this point. Hey, who inherits the name of the world, the protector of humanity, Veltang! And unlike the Himeko of this world, who's another new verse we know very little about, this is not the case for this Velt. For, you see, he's the same one we always knew! Veltang has traveled between universes, along with Void Archives, in fact, who is currently nowhere to be seen, and landed in the Astro Express! Velt is still the same Velt he always knew. As I mentioned, Void Archives is still around too, but you have no information about where the Divine Key went to. And going by the trailers, it seems there's a third person who seems to be traveling universes, still keeping her outfit from the world we know. But that's the most curious of them. That's... Carol! In the very first trailer of Star Rail, we can see Carol burning the train leading to the stars of Velt. Since then, we had no information about Carol whatsoever, what she's even doing, or where she is, so that keeps a mystery for now. According to Mihoyo, the animated short on where this happens is a concept trailer, so I don't even know if she's really present in Star Rail at all, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Let's go into the world we have them. According to the concept trailer, Star Rail is a world free from the Honkai, somehow. That would also mean that, if the Sky people are planning on invading this universe to harvest the Honkai, they'll find none. But we'll probably find out more about this in the game. That also means that we simply have no herders around, but we do have something similar, Eons. Mysterious entities that control the universe. We have 8 of them. The Trailblades, the Destruction, the Hunt, the Erudition, the Harmony, the Nihility, the Preservation, and the Abundance. 
The first stop of the Astro Express seems to be on the planet of Jarillo VI. This icy planet, after the War of Gods, which you know nothing about, got a very long period of peace and prosperity. But, after a while, a lack of resources and the arrival of the Eternal Freeze brought the civilization to an abrupt halt, bringing all the survivors to the corner of the planet. Thus, the city of Bellobunk was created to protect themselves from the cold. Living in this situation, Jarrello VI lost all the contact with other civilizations, after something called the Cancer of All Worlds appeared. War of Gods and Cancer of All Worlds are very interesting concepts. Could they be related to the Honkai? The last one seems very close to what the Honkai actually do, in fact. The thing is, the city of Bellabog thrives and lives as the flame of hope on the cold, desolated planet. In this city, we can find characters like Sample, a merchant, Jeppard, the captain of the guard, Pella, the brilliant officer of the guards, Asta, a young girl raised by a robot. But we also have people that might draw more of rotation. There's Servo, who's related to Jeppard, a mechanic that was once a close friend of Cocolia, who doesn't seem to be up to good, and is also the final boss of the beta. There's the fastidious doctor, who seems to be great with children. She is not. Tasha, who, in this world, doesn't seem to need to become the mercenary raven and can tend to children like she always wanted. There's Bronia, the supreme guardian of Bellabog, commander of the guards, heir and future leader of the city. And there's Silly, who grew in the underworld of Bellabog and seems way less shy in reserve than we are used to. It doesn't end there, we have places like the Hertha Space Station. The place is led by the brilliant Hertha, her lead researcher, Asta, and the head of her security department, Arlen. There's also the Stellar Hunters, who are in the wanted list of the Interastral Peace Corporation. They're led by the stylish Kafka, accompanied by the mysterious Blade and the genius hacker, Silver Wolf. Wait, 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 wait that's Bronya again? Why are there two Bronyas in this game? Another someone important that has been shown around is Su Shang, who is also here as a newcomer to the Cloud Knights, believing in the good of the heart and helping people. Considering the Su Shang of the story and you left on a train to meet new places, could they be the same? Little to nothing is known after all. After all, that's just the beginning, we still know nothing about Star Rail. We barely know a thing about the plot, the world, the slightly altered version of the characters we know and love. And well, while we know nothing about what Void Archives and the Skype people are on about in this universe, there have been glimpses of a man, an intergalactic merchant who looks suspiciously a lot like the Otto Apocalypse we knew from times past. He's called Luocha, and for some reason he carries a coffin. But from now on, I think we'll have to wait until this adventure can begin. And I truly hope this little, or not so little guide, could have been of help to you, dear watcher, to understand this beautiful and enormous world we're about to face. Hop in, my friends, because our next stop is the stars! Uh, are you kidding me? You want to take this more than 50 minute video and do a TLDR of this whole behemoth? Uh, Alright, fine, whatever. Honkai Pet. People from 50,000 years ago made a sentient weapon to fight Honkai. Sentient weapon tries to rope a powerful old man from this era to deal with aliens. They both agree to go on a journey through universes. Still too long? TODR of the TODR. Old man can't stand still enjoy retirement for his life and decides to go on a journey to save another universe. Their gods, Veltiang, tells is going to murder you! Well, that was all. Honestly, the whole reason I started playing Honkai Impact was so I could understand the plot of Star Rail, you know. It's not like I played much or anything, I think I can stop just fine. Holy heavens above. <laughs> How do I stop playing this game? Gu guys, I'm serious, I think VLV is coming next patch and I really need the crystals for her, but help me. Explain.